But our last step here is going to be talking about our conclusion, and so this is when we start to make that inference for ourselves from talking about our samples in the analysis. We're now going to start looking at how that applies to the population. The first step that we need to do is cover our confidence intervals and make our inference. So we need to one thing, calculate our confidence intervals, and then make our inference about them. And after that we will draw them on the graph as well. So remember, confidence interval formula will be given to you, but that's the median. Oops. Median plus n minus 1.5 times the IQR divided by the square root of the sample size. Remember, n is the sample size. So here you can see I've got the four apples near the river and four apples far from the river. I've got the median plus 1.5 times the IQR divided by the sample size of 30. And in this case, I've got the minus, and this gives me the upper and lower band of my confidence interval. And same for far from the river. So once I've got these, I need to interpret them. Okay, so this is making my inference about where the medians are back in the population. So importantly here, from my confidence intervals, I can infer that the population median, hugely important, for the number of apples per tree near the river, is likely to be between 144 and 167 apples. Again, round. Don't tell me that you're going to have a half-eaten apple hanging from the tree that you're going to count. Okay, round it. From my confidence intervals, I can infer that the population median, again, so population median, for the number of apples per tree far from the river is likely to be between 84 and 100 apples. I've got my units. I've got my confidence intervals there, and hugely important word for us here is that likely thing. So I want to make sure that you really remember to use that word likely when you do your inference, because we're not 100% certain that we know our population median is going to be there, but we're likely, we're fairly sure, right? We have some uncertainty here, and you have to get that word in there. So the next step then would be to actually draw our confidence intervals onto our graph. So if you take a look, I'd already done that on here, approximately. It can be hard on the scales to read, but, you know, give a look at it and just um, do the best you can to make sure that they're on there. Remember, they should be symmetrical. Your confidence intervals need to be symmetrical if they're not, and symmetrical about the median. So if they're not, you've got something a little bit off. And mine kind of look all right, but not perfect. And you can tell quite clearly here, also because the middle 50% didn't overlap, but my confidence intervals here do not overlap. If I took that confidence interval and dragged it straight down the screen, it would not overlap at all in value with the other one. So if they're at all close, it's really important that you stop and think about the numbers that you can actually look and see. Does the bottom of one of them, so in this case, there's the lowest point on near the river, is that bigger or smaller than the highest point on far from the river? So if you had confidence intervals that were close and it was hard to read it off the graph, come back and look at your numbers and they can tell you exactly where those boundaries are and if they overlap. So here I can see that the lowest for near the river is 144 and the highest for far from the river is 100. That's like a 44 apple difference. Clearly they don't overlap. So, coming back to my rule here, because my confidence intervals do not overlap, I can be fairly sure, hugely important as well, because this is again expressing our uncertainty that we're not 100% sure, but it's likely. We're fairly sure that back in the population, you have to have the population there, of the apple orchard, there is a difference between the median number of apples per tree near the river compared to far from the river. The trees growing near the river have more apples than trees growing far from the river. And so in this case, make sure you answer your question. And our original question here was this idea, do um, apple trees far from the river actually have more, or near the river have more than far from the river? And in fact, they do. So we've answered our question, we've made our inference to the population, and we've expressed some uncertainty here. And again, we're talking about the medians, which is also hugely important, because that was what our question was about, was the median. Okay. So, 
for our conclusions, we've got to find our confidence intervals, and then from there, use them to determine whether or not they overlap, and remind ourselves, if there is no overlap, there is a difference. And if there is overlap, no difference. Okay. And again, remind yourself as well this idea that the population median and the confidence interval is just telling us that I don't know exactly what the population median is, but I could take a guess that it might be anywhere inside of that line. So since the population median for this one could be anywhere inside of there, no matter what, worst case scenario, it's still bigger than the best case scenario of the other population median. Okay. Next thing for us to get into, this is the nitty gritty, the really hard stuff to kind of interpret and talk about well for your particular situation. So make sure you're not just copying and pasting, but that you're typing this out and thinking about it as you write it. And same for the whole report but talking about sampling variability and how to reduce it, and then we need to do a second thing, which is predict what would happen if we took a bigger sample. So I'm probably just going to do this in a second video, because it's going to drag on. So yeah, check back for that one.